Nestled among the multi-million dollar mansions of South Florida's Palm Beach community is a sprawling 62,000 square foot resort mansion and members only club known worldwide as Mar-a-Lago. Since 2016, this lavish estate has become synonymous with the exploits of one man, President Donald J. Trump. He has an apartment there and he comes there pretty regularly and he brings dignitaries with him pretty regularly. But this grand dame of Florida's Gold Coast had a rich story to tell long before the president made his mark. Since 1927, the property has been a symbol of Florida's upper echelon. The brainchild of serial company heiress Marjorie Merriweather Post. It has long hosted top VIPs from around the globe. People would always say, who were some of the dignitaries and celebrities who were entertained at places like Mar-a-Lago? And the simple answer is everybody. Now, at almost 100 years old, this luxurious resort has truly become the jewel of South Florida. In its peak, and we're really talking 20s, 30s, and 40s, Palm Beach was the place to be. For the wealthy and the celebrity, if you were gonna go somewhere, you went to Palm Beach. By the 1920s, when Marjorie Merriweather Post arrived in Palm Beach for her winter excursions, she was well established in high society. Her father, C.W. Post, was an inventor and founder of the Postum Cereal Company. He taught his only daughter every aspect of the business. Under her guidance, Postum Cereal would one day become General Foods. Marjorie Merriweather Post expanded her family's cereal empire and eventually acquired frozen food companies and really started the whole frozen food industry. Not only was she a prominent businesswoman, but she was also a dedicated philanthropist. Marjorie Merriweather Post was, of course, a businesswoman at a time when that was rare. She inherited $11 million from her father, and that gives you a lot of freedom to do all sorts of things. She set up a soup kitchen in New York. She donated to help out World War I veterans. She was part of the socialite world. And like so many people, especially the ones in Palm Beach, nothing was more important than entertaining and being seen entertaining. As a young woman with a significant fortune, Post sought out the finer things in life. Palm Beach in the 1920s was an extravagant place. Right after World War I, that was the beginning of the great land boom in the area. It was full of extremes, extreme wealth, extreme weather, extreme people coming down to the area and making it their home. When she first came down, she had a place, but she was looking for a bigger place, a place where she could entertain. She wanted something more grand and extravagant to compare to the other socialites in the area. And hands-on Post was a pioneer when it came to the development of her property. She was very much involved in seeking the property to build Mar-a-Lago. Supposedly, she crawled through the jungle looking through the land to see the perfect area for her to build her home. In the 1920s, there already were several hotels, several mansions, several estates, but parts of the island still were undeveloped. And anywhere it was undeveloped was, was pretty awful. There was jungle and mangrove, and often there was standing water. The property that Marjorie chose was over 17 acres of land from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to Lake Worth. It was in a prime location right in the sort of the middle of the barrier island that went from north to south. Thus, the picturesque property was named Maro Lago, Spanish for sea to lake. Construction began in 1924, but the financial state of the country was under duress. Construction began in the mid-1920s. The crew was working really hard at getting it built quickly. However, that was right in the middle of a recession and eventually the Great Depression occurred. The Great Depression, when we think about it, we think, oh, it hit the United States in the late 1920s, 1929, and the 1930s when everyone started feeling the Depression. In Palm Beach, in Palm Beach County, we felt the Depression 
in 1926. But strong-willed Marjorie Merriweather Post was determined to finish the estate. She opted to continue to provide employment for her construction workers because she wanted it completed, and she wanted to keep people employed during the Great Depression. A lover of the arts and style, Post brought New York class to the estate. She hired Joseph Urban, a scenic designer for the Ziegfeld Follies and the Metropolitan Opera, to bring his own extravagant ideas. It took three ships to transport Dorian Stone from Genoa, Italy to Palm Beach. And the estate was adorned with 36,000 15th century Spanish decorative tiles. Marjorie's vision for Mar-a-Lago was extravagant. This was the Gilded Age. Everything needed to be big and better than your neighbors. And the neighbors had very large homes in the 1920s. Mar-a-Lago had 58 bedrooms. It had 33 bathrooms. It had a nine-hole golf course. It had an 1,800-square-foot living room. And it had a 75-foot tower. This was not a modest estate. Construction for Mar-a-Lago was completed in early 1927, and it was way over budget. Halfway through the construction, Marjorie added additions to the design, as well as other things that she felt were necessary for her social life experience that she wanted to bring to the area. $2.5 million, and three years later, Mar-a-Lago was complete and Marjorie Merriweather Post was the queen of Palm Beach society. Mar-a-Lago was built for two and a half million dollars, which would be about $36 million in today's money. She brought in all the fanciest tiles and stone and wood and everything else. But that was just for the cost of building the estate. That doesn't count the countless dollars she spent on Native American art and art from Europe and paintings and everything. Adjacent to the main house was an 85,000 square foot bath and tennis club that Post called the first cabana club in the country. Marjorie built Mar-a-Lago specifically for hosting grand parties and for hosting dignitaries from all over the world. So she was known for throwing balls that brought in people from every walk of life but specifically from the grand, wealthy walk of life. Post and her family enjoyed their winter vacations at Mar-a-Lago, but she always wanted more for her stunning Palm Beach property. Close to the end of Marjorie's life, she was setting up her properties to be distributed to different areas. Her greatest hope for Mar-a-Lago was for it to become a winter White House for the President of the United States. So in 1964, Marjorie Merriweather Post decided that she was going to just give the estate to the state of Florida. But the upkeep was estimated at $250,000 a year, which of course was a lot of money in 1964. In January of 1969, the Department of the Interior designated the estate as the Mar-a-Lago National Historic Site. And the property was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1972. The home was designated as a National Historic Site in the 1970s, and it was placed in federal control after her death, as she had bequested. When she died, her will gave it to the federal government. President Nixon had, of course, a winter home in Key Biscayne. So one day, he got in his helicopter, and he flew up to Mar-a-Lago, and he landed on the estate. And he looked around the place, and he said, you know, I don't think I can justify the cost in federal money that would be needed to upkeep this place. So finally, in 1980, the federal government just gave it back to the estate. And that's where it stayed for five years until someone else came along. In 1985, Donald Trump purchased the property from the Post Foundation and used the estate as a private residence. But the annual cost became a burden to him as well. Donald Trump goes to the town of Palm Beach and he says, this place is costing me a million dollars a year in upkeep and I can't afford it. 
So I need you to let me turn it into a private club and have it rezoned. In 1995, Mar-a-Lago was reestablished as the exclusive members-only Mar-a-Lago Club. Complete with a 20,000 square foot ballroom renovation featuring $7 million in gold leaf. Then, something funny happened in 2016. Mr. Trump was elected president of the United States. From the earliest days of his presidency to today, Trump continues to visit Mar-a-Lago frequently and designated it as his winter White House in a 2017 tweet, fulfilling Post's long-held wish for the property. I guess, ironically, Marjorie Merriweather Post's dream of turning Mar-a-Lago into some kind of a winter White House finally came true, but probably not in any way she would have imagined. Now, of course, Mar-a-Lago is a private club with private memberships. She turned Mar-a-Lago into a grand home that still has an impact in those areas. The Gilded Age was a decadent period, and Mar-a-Lago is an example of that period of time. It embodies the Gilded Age of the 1920s.